Hello, my creative collective. This is your reading for April 14th, and this is Into the Infinite. I'm Charlie, and I'm so grateful that you're here. So the readings this week have been amazing so far. So good. Oh, so rich. This rich sense of understanding our value and our worth and moving forward on it, right? Really integrating inner child lessons, um, you know, ending cycles, all of it. It's got this beautiful hero's journey, which truly encapsulates what I wanted these morning messages, these daily creative messages to do for creatives, for creators, for those in places of making things and, and going through those, those, all those stages in those places to understand what they bring here, what they're doing here in terms of their, with their creativity and how it gives us life and permission to really open our hearts and how beautiful an exchange that is. So let's dive in, shall we? <laughs> I would like to invite the angels, my guardian angels, my spirit guides, protectors, teachers, and their healing energy to this space. And I ask that it is a safe space that allows for the fullest expression of our light, humanity, ascension, and healing. And side note, I also ask that it is a safe and brave space, right? Thank you so much. Uh, safe and brave space. I say that because of the lessons that I integrated from the, uh, holding space book by heather plett right we want spaces that are safe but we also want spaces that are brave that that really bring us into that brave space so um yes and brave you know you can have safe spaces too but i like that ad the addition of brave because it means that in 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 the face of fear when we want safety we also integrate the brave and i feel like that's great energy yeah it's perfect energy for uh for this week and the Libra full moon on the 16th, but also just um, the expansion and fiery energy that we're seeing coming through this week in the readings. So let's dive in. So we're going to go with the Heroes, uh, blah, 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 Heroes Journey Dream Oracle. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love this stack. It's uh, by Kelly Sullivan Walden and the artwork is by Rasuli. So Spirit, let's dive in, shall we? What messages do you have for the Creative Collective? for april 13th or 14th sorry Ugh, april 14th you've won the lottery that actually came out yesterday uh, amazing see this is it's a progression through i love the following these storylines that spirits got in the castle of dreams become altered by the color of your dreams uh, around full moons my dreams kind of go like we a little bit uh, you know, off the chart. So p maybe pay attention to the, your dreams this week. Um, yeah, I would say pay attention to your dreams this week. I think that they may come in, they may feature importantly. Me time, enjoy your own company. This card all week. Oh my gosh. It's been coming out with every reading. One more. A splendid torch blaze brightly. Of course. Why wouldn't you? I love this energy so much. That fire energy. Oof. And like the fire in my chart is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm almost getting that this like, this castle of dreams and me time, it's almost like she's holding the moon to me. And I feel like perhaps around the full moon, it's going to be really important for you to take some, to get some rest and not like, I'm going to give myself a half hour extra sleep. No, like rest your mind your body and your soul rest right but this fire oof, i love it it's so damn juicy okay so i'm gonna use the muse tarot by chris ann to put together this spread for you you want these okay um so we have the four of cups and the ten of pentacles they came out together. Temperance, again, almost identical place to yesterday. Emperor. And what else do you got for me, Spirit, for April 14th? Please and thank you so very much. All right. Five of Cups. Five of Wands, the Moon, hmm. some change I'm getting off of this, some change, definite change for you here. What else you got for me, Spirit? Hmm. 
Six of Wands. Inspiration. The Hermit. I'm almost getting that you're seeing things start to shift around you. Muse of Inspiration. You're beginning to see things change around you now that you've kind of recognized not only your worth, but there's like something that you value differently now. And I think it could be yourself. It could be yourself because I have the Eight of Swords and the Empress on the split. It, I think it may be yourself. You're learning to value yourself differently and what you put into the world. Nine of Swords. Yeah, I think that there was a way that you were caught up in your head before and you questioned it so much. And the Two of Swords again from yesterday. I'm just going to pull one more. And the Page of Swords, Clarity. And the Muse of Pentacles from yesterday, too. Wow. Almost as if to say, like, don't forget. Remember. Remember. Um, so the Ten of Pentacles and the Four of Cups tells me that there's something that it's like you're bored where you are. And you realize this now because of the value components that you're able to see on the wings of this lesson and this change that you're going through, right? I tend to think about change as like change happens, but then what we end up doing is like we're looking at how it's changed us and what we want, right? And once that once that change takes place, it's like this balance and this rebalancing. Um, again, the full moon is featuring prominently here, but once this rebalancing takes place, we step into our power, we step into our power and it's like we decide what people need, what, what we need from other people and what people are going to get from us, right? The emperor doesn't screw around, right? It's like I've said before, like it just, you know, I've had experiences where people that I'm not like that are acquaintances at best are upset when I set a boundary. And I'm like, why? At what point did you feel that you were entitled to my energy at all times, no matter what you did and what opinions you held of things that I hold near and dear to me? right? At what point? And that's what this, the emperor asks questions like that. So it's like you're stepping into this emperor place, right? You're stepping into this emperor place and you're able to ask questions more. I'm not just asking questions more, my loves, but asking questions that kind of help you to see if this is a boredom that you feel or a boredom with patterns or a boredom with the way that people have treated you because there have been situations where I was like I'm really tired of this like tired like not bored as in like oh I have nothing to do bored as in like this isn't growing me anymore that's a terrifying realization right this isn't growing me anymore it has outlived its value to me and I'm not saying to take things like this lightly when it comes to people because I do not believe that people should be discarded that that energy like oh it just infuriates me like nothing annoys me more um i'm not talking about throwing people away i'm talking about looking at situations and saying this isn't working for me anymore and recognizing like there's a difference between setting a boundary and saying okay um you know this person has had ample opportunity to interact with me and to care about what i do and all of that stuff and if they don't let them go right let them go because they're not going to be on your side and it's almost like there's this boredom with where you are, right? I think about where you are and I think about letting people go. So all of this is coming into context for me, um, just so that you know, all of this is coming into place and context for me because it's about how, um, you know, there have been many situations in my 20s and in my teens where I did not stand up for myself. I just like let people run roughshod over. Even in 2020, I had an opportunity and someone basically tore an absolute strip off of me for no reason, really, um, in, given it wasn't in proportion to what happened. Um, and I think that all of this is here to say that there's a way that like you're kind of moving past this feeling of like, well, I don't know. I don't know, right? The four of cups is boredom. It's also things you're not seeing, right? And I almost feel like there's this, there are things that you're wanting just below the surface and you're not realizing that you're in the cup. Like this is also a, a card to me of connection and disconnection, right? Connection with others, disconnect from others. But I think that this is kind of what you want and you are here in a way, but I almost feel like you have to just, this is like boredom with where you are because of how 
things have been going in your connections and not to say all of them, uh, you know, it could just be one or two. And sometimes this just means friendships that re need renegotiation of terms, that need a rebalancing, that need um, a reestablishment of boundaries, that need something, right? They need something to make you, to pull you out of this energy because it's not working for you. And that's fundamentally where it's at. And it's okay, right? It's just not something you value. And that's absolutely fine. You do not have to. You don't have to at all. In the temperance card, this is Sag energy and ninth house and Jupiter energy. So it's expansion, right? Um, so it's almost like there's there's some way that you're, this is like you're expanding into this emperor energy of knowing what you want, right? The emperor integrates all four kings. So the lessons of the king of swords, clarity, king of pentacles, knowing what's important to you and the king of wands being unafraid to go for it and the king of cups while still being emotionally connected. And I think that this is the energy that is, you're, it's almost like three feet from gold is what I'm hearing. This Napoleon Hill quote, or there's a book that, uh, there's a book by that that has um, that title, Three Feet from Gold. I just feel like you're three feet from gold right now and you're coming into a balance and I don't want you to feel like, like don't give up. It, don't give up, right? Don't, not everything is lost. Don't give up. 11-11 11, 11 on the time. Because right now I feel like you kind of want to, right? Like there's a lot of conflict around you and it's really... Um, it's like you're seeing these different sides of yourself. And what I just got from this is the reflection energy from yesterday. And it's like, it could be the different situations reflected these different parts to you. And you really didn't, like, you couldn't look at yourself in the mirror, right? Like, you could barely look at yourself in the mirror. And there was one where you could, but it was like the dropping out of it energy, right? Like the energy down here where you're like, I'm out. I am outies. Like it wasn't the reflection that you were looking at. It was the the way out. Um, but yeah, I'm just getting that there's something about how you've been feeling. This, this boredom turned into um, feeling like not all was lost, but just like what should be an ocean of emotion kind of froze over. It froze over. And I feel like there's a way that it felt like you couldn't really look at yourself in the mirror. It felt like there was a way that you really couldn't. It was hard for you to face this part of yourself. It was very definite hidden energy from you. It was absolutely hidden energy from you. And I think that because this is the position of like things that could become a tower if they go unaddressed, it's just a small inconvenience right now. But that it's a five of cups tells me that this could become um, not a new new pattern, but perhaps a habit of self-pity, a habit of looking at things that have spilled, like looking at the glasses half empty. Um, when in fact, you are the entire cup. You are in the entire cup. That's your key to connection with others is to remember that. It's almost like I'm getting to that you're in this 10 of pentacles place, but you can't see it because you're so focused on what isn't there, right? And it, this could be like an overexertion of boundaries that's keeping people out right like keeping new connections out keeping new friends out um because you're just worried about the same things happening over again because they really hurt you five of wands is is a lot of conflict um a lot of conflict and the five of cups is like not so much emotionally conflicted as it is just sad and there's a full moon that she's got tucked in um, into her chest there like she's playing her her emotions really close to her chest but everyone can see it anyway right there's a tear coming down her face everyone can see how she's feeling regardless let me see if it'll work here everyone can see it so I think and it's not to say like everyone can see how you're feeling no it's just people might it might be very obvious to others that what you've been doing isn't working and you may not want to see it four of cups you may not want to see it um but the moon is here to remind you that the things that you are hiding are at times your source of liberation, six of wands, right? I think in this case, it really is a source of liberation. And the six of wands in the traditional Rider Waite tarot, I tend to think of like public celebration, like public facing, like people gathering in the square to celebrate something. And that's how I feel like this energy is showing up, right? It's showing up in a way that's like public facing work and the hermit is here too. So it's almost like, this is this invitation to go inward to really resolve the way people may be responding to these changes that you're making. It's okay. It's your new norm. 
sometimes it's, sometimes it's lonely. Like it's not, it's not easy. Like in one year, I think I had three of my best friends, like friends that were really close to me, just like dip. And like I had just finished grad school and all of that stuff. So there were, there were a lot of reasons like during grad school, I was very unavailable. Um, and some people didn't understand what that meant and that's fine. It's okay. Uh, but it was also conflicting values and some of the friendships that left, I was like, well, these have been kind of going for a long time. They've kind of been leaving for a long time and I just haven't found ways to talk about it or to face it. Right. So that's where I see this, this in here is like, it's almost like this thing where it's like you see it, but you don't want to acknowledge it, even though the 10 of pentacles is where you're at. Because it is really, it's painful, right? It's painful when you make these changes and not everyone comes with you, right? Like people say that there's all these jokes about Aquarians being like cold hearted and all that stuff. And, you know, definitely um, clear about my emotions. I don't like to articulate them unless I'm clear. Like I don't, I, it just doesn't feel good to me. Um, but, uh, in five, 15, uh, 1555 was just on the time. So like five, 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 I think that there's ma massive change five, five. Um, but what I'm saying with this is that there's, you know, there's a way that you may need clarity is I, I thought about that in terms of I'm an, an Aquarian sun, moon, um, and Gemini rising. And I think about how, I think about how that's a sentence. Um, but it's almost like you want clarity of emotion before you can articulate anything about or to the conflict, even though it's still really hidden from you and you need to let go of the idea that it's going to be neat and tidy. And I think that's the lesson of the hermit here. Cause I think this like public facing recognition, right? Public recognition, celebration, victory, you want this. And it is like a tidy celebration. And I think that this is the Virgo energy of the hermit here to say, don't get caught up in the idea that it has to be a perfect kind of healing or moving on, right? Sometimes you don't get closure. Sometimes you don't get all of the ways that you want healing to be packaged really tidily. It just doesn't happen that way. And it's hard. It's really hard. It's really difficult. 1717. I have so much compassion for anyone going through this because it is really difficult. It's hard to heal in the absence of closure. Um, yeah, it's hard to heal in the absence of closure. But it's not impossible. It's not impossible. Does it take work? Yes. But I think that you also have to expand into the vision of a life that doesn't require you to um, need closure from people in order for you to heal and in order for you to move on. What would that look like for you, right? This week, there's been so much manifesting energy. And I think like a splendid torch is here to remind you this is almost like an ace of wands in an emperor's hand. Like this is something that this is something that the emperor would hold to light the way or this would be in the hermit's um, you know, in the hermit's, um, uh, light, I, it's not the right word for it, but I'm, my brain is not, um, not picking up on the right word. Their chamber, I guess. I'm not sure, but that's what the, that's what these two energies would hold. And I think that this me time, enjoy your own company is really an invitation to remember to do that because it, I get the impression that you've somehow put other people first. Um, that just, you've somehow put other people first. And we do that sometimes because we, you know, we want to be liked. I mean, as a, as a queer person, I was, I mean, more, I'm, I identify as trans. So more now than like, I'm, I'm more trans than queer. Um, though they're not related necessarily queer is a sexual orientation and trans as a gender identity. Um, but when I was queer, there was this like trope and you can look it up. It's like the gay, the likable gay, right? The agreeable gay. And it's like, there's this pressure to, for us to be like the BFFs of the world that are just like, oh, hey, like this yucky stereotype, 1919 on the time. But in some ways, it's not just gay people that fall into that. We can all, especially women, fall into this agreeability where you have to just like, you, you have to say yes to everything. And there's this pressure to be perfect to be Virgo, like the hermit in reverse, like perfection. And it blocks wisdom, right? It blocks wisdom. And I think this is a call to free yourself from likability because if you can't face yourself in the mirror at the end of the day, 
And the only time that you can really face how you truly feel is at night. Um, like it at night, meaning like when you're by yourself and, and alone and like, you shouldn't have a life that requires you to be alone, to be who you are. Can I just remind you of that? You shouldn't need that. You don't. And with this Libra full moon being so focused on relationships this weekend and focused on, um, you know, releasing as, as full moons are, I think that this might be a good time to look at that pattern, right? To look at that pattern. Because I think that wisdom is here for you. It's available to you whether you like it or not. <laughs> like, you know, you can turn it, turn this, you can turn away from this, but I feel like you're kind of leaning into this because I get the impression that other ways just haven't worked. And the muse of inspiration is here. I think this is you, I don't want to say burning bridges, but I think that in a way this is you um, letting the fire of Aries season and the I, me, my of Aries be what corrects your course, like course correction. And I, the, the moon energy behind this here, I'm behind these two, this, this reflected energy, I almost feel like you're really starting to, to see that there's a path through, like you don't have to be, be alone, right? You don't have to be alone. This looks like a much more barren landscape than this one. This one has some signs of life coming back. And I think that that's the one that you need to take is the one that reminds you that there's a fire inside you that that is important, right? And I see the fire is almost a form of wings here on this individual. So it's like that's how you're going to soar is getting back in touch with that spark, that inspiration. And you're moving away, I think, from this um, tendency to be in your head about it because we have the nine of swords here, nine of swords, and then we have the two of swords and we have the page of swords. So like a lot of thought, a lot of thought energy. And the page of swords is here to be like, no, let me put on your, put on the right way of looking at this. Let's get the right way of looking at this instead of listening to all of this chatter mentally, right? Instead of listening to all of this mental chatter about what we should be doing or how we should be behaving or how we should, ought, must, all of that stuff is just really heavy energy. Um, so I think that what this is here to remind you of is that you are, um, you're kind of transcending all of this. You're transcending this, but there are things that you can't necessarily take with you. And it's hard. It is. I'm not even going to pull punches here, my darlings. Like not even, not even a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I think the Sagittarian energy and Jupiter is here to say that you're integrating a new philosophy for yourself. Um, uh, there is oh, a song just came and went. It came and went, but it's like about integrating this like emperor energy for yourself. This is this is you being in your confidence. This is you being sure of yourself, steady, uh, established, maturing, growing. Right. Like understanding that you may have been born to stand out, like you can't necessarily hide that. And, you know, balancing this energy is really important. Um, to me, temperance is about balance. Uh, in the traditional rider way, it is, it is um, the angel. I think of it as Archangel Michael um, balancing the, the emotion, the water, the cups, right? Um, and I get the impression here that this is really for you about expansion with Jupiter expansion and stepping into this high higher vision that you've you've had for yourself the emperor and the ten of pentacles right you can have it all but you first got to be able to see it you first have to be able to see it and sometimes you know when we have one or two things that go wrong like you know the year that I lost those those two friends and then the year after that lost another one um, and it wasn't really a loss. It was just like a breaking apart of what was already falling apart. Like it wasn't great. Right. But how often did I admit that? Because I was like, oh, maybe it'll just change and get better. I was naive in that too. Right. I'm not, I'm not perfect. I'm not saying that I was like, oh, they did this to me. No, that's not tea that I'm spilling here. I'm talking about how those friendships left my life because they just weren't compatible with where I was going. Right. And I think the tower nature of them came because I wasn't paying attention. And this could be a call to really 
pay attention even though you do not want to she's not looking at the at the water she's almost like looking away from it like she's looking in the other direction of it right and then you have the five of wands they can't look themselves in the eye this inner conflict sometimes happens when we have outer conflict but the message here that i'm getting very strong um is that the all the first step you need to take is to remember what remember what's most important number one but also this is I think a kind of add-on to yesterday's and letting yourself grieve and like if there's change happening that feels like it's too much it's okay to just say for a day like it's a lot it's a lot and I just need to have like an ugly cry and watch a movie and have popcorn and then sleep it off and then tomorrow's a whole new day whole new day but today I'm giving myself a day just to to grieve to sit and grieve right? And that is a healing energy. Some people might say, well, that's really destructive because you're sitting in that emotion and you're going to manifest from that place. If you do it for a day and just let yourself feel it all and then move on from that, you're actually really wise. You're wise in integrating alchemical wisdom in service to your emotions. Um, I'm not saying sit in it for a week, but, um, and this is not talking about depression because that can kind of last for much longer. Um, and with biochemical, um, reasons um and also situational ones too let's be real here systems make it really tough to thrive right systems make it tough to thrive um when it comes to this spread actually you know what i'm going to do i'm going to clarify using the rider weight tarot here um And just as a heads up as well, I will beginning, I'll be beginning to put extended readings into, um, into this channel, I'll be integrating that soon, not for a bit yet. So you've got lots of time and there'll still be a ton of content. Um, there'll still be a ton of content in the, ch on the channel. So <laughs> fear not. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to let you know that in advance so that you were prepared for that change and shift. Um, it's just to make this a little more sustainable for myself and to, make it so that I can continue to put content into this channel like this because I really, really like doing it. I like doing it in service to you and um, to, well, yeah, to you, my viewers, right? So, okay, let's do this here. Spirit, can I get some clarification here on this mental confusion that we're walking away from? I'm hearing that the fire of inspiration is burning away what no longer serves you wow <laughs> okay so these cards came out um so the fire of inspiration knight of wands came out is burning away what no longer serves you seven of wands came out <laughs> um and then the empress and ten of pentacles what yeah lots of uh lots of healing here because you're 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 going back to the ten of pentacles right ten of pentacles here ten of pentacles here so i just i'm getting that it's like this beautiful things are coming back around and better than what you could have imagined the first time you won the lottery make room for wonderment I think that wonder is going to be a big part of how you kind of move through this, this really, I want to say thick energy, this really thick energy here. Um, and just allowing room for wonder at what's happening and through what's happening instead of being stuck in this four of cups place where it's really difficult to see it, right? Yeah, it's really difficult to see it. Make room for wonder. Make room for wonder. I love it when the deck is like, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That's what the, that's what the guidance is. Exacto mundo. Okay. Ace of Pentacles and Five of Cups. Yeah. It's like you're figuring out, you're understanding and you're seeing the wisdom of the fact that when there's something new, there's sometimes stuff you have to let go of too, right? We can't take it all with us, uh, which is both a blessing and the difficult part, right? It's a blessing and a really difficult part. So... Can I get some more messages here, Spirit, for my creative collective? Of course the Emperor would be here. Yeah, Five of Pentacles, Nine of Wands, the wheel. Um, the wheel showing up sooner than it did yesterday. Um, it was somewhere over here. Same thing with, I think, the Emperor. Um, what 
what I'm getting from this is that this is just, it's sort of like you're, you're more supported than I think that you understand. And this could be someone coming in as an emperor who's matching your energy, but, but, and it's a big but, <laughs> I don't know. Um, this emperor energy, I think, is like it cannot find you when you're in this like doubtful energy and it's almost like this nine of wands is like well f that no 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 mm -mm. right you're you're really blocking this because it's like you're seeing through the 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 window pane that has the, these five pentacles on it and you're missing the fact that the emperor isn't showing up in a ten of pentacles because you are the ten of pentacles and I'm not talking about money here. I'm talking about things that you value. You've been externalizing things that you value. You are the emperor showing up here. You are the emperor. But I think that this, uh, the emperor here is like, it's reminding you that like, it's almost like you've been looking for that outside of yourself. You've been looking for that outside of yourself in, in projects, in relationships. Like this is when you have a creative idea, needing permission from like six different friends to do it. And when you share the idea, it's like, you're asking them for permission to, to do it instead of just sharing the idea. And you're like, well, should I, shouldn't I, I don't know. Mm, I'm not really sure. Da, 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 da. And like, you're doing this, like circling, this cycling through this cycling through wheel of fortune. Like it's, it's like you're cycling through these, these patterns all on the way to this Ten of Pentacles, forgetting that your call here, again, Sagittarian and Jupiter energy, temperance up here, and um, the wheel and Jupiter's, it, this can also be Piscean energy too, don't kid, my, don't kid yourself, uh, so it can be like slippery energy as well as the moon, right, the moon energy too, so a lot of this is like, it's not hidden from you, I think it's just been something that you're unaware of, but you're becoming aware of it, and I think all at once, which is causing this sort of emotional shift, an emotional change for you. Yeah, the moon again, nine of cups. Like it's an emotional shift for you. The moon is still out. Ten of cups on the five of cups and temperance. Why are we excited for this expansion away from the five of cups? Yeah. I think that this is kind of like clarity about what you want to put into the world three two three two it's definitely not a swords energy by any means but the reason why i say clarity about what you want to put into the world is this is creative energy this is creative potential it's like the imagination and planning that goes into something before it meets the the world around you and i think this is beautiful energy to be in because the ten of cups to me is kind of a wish fulfillment that's coming in um but I think the five of cups is here saying you're not really expecting it. Like you're like walking in the other direction away from this thing. You're like, well, no, I'm just going in this direction away. Yeah. See, this just came out. You're heartbroken. I think that there was something that didn't work that you're really heartbroken about. Um, there's something that you're really heartbroken about and really disappointed in. Um, and I think it's something that perhaps is what put you in king energy. It's one of those heartbreaks and or like letdowns or disappointments or betrayals that matured you and grew you perhaps in a way that you did not want to right uh, and it could have been to do with some kind of um, passionate project or a relationship of some kind uh, that's really kind of tweaked your energy in a way that made you doubt that made you doubt value and what is important to you and that's the truth Spirit, can you tell me how we're resolving this five of wands and the emperor energy, this fiery, this fiery energy? How are we coming to a resolution here through things like wonder? Five of swords, that completes the trifecta in a way. That tells me we have the five of cups, the five of wands, and the five of swords. The only thing missing... No, we have the five of pentacles too. So that's like absolutely change. Yeah. This is big changes in what you expected of other people, what you expected of yourself, what you thought was possible for your world, and also how you experienced and integrated lessons of conflict. Yeah, balance. How you balanced conflict in the ways that you're walking away from things. 
I'm going to put temperance out there again because that's more Sag energy. Um, this could be, a, like with this card, I almost see like this could be a Sag um, or someone with Sag placements or fire placements in their chart that is helping you to like this. I almost feel like this is like an angel that doesn't, how the heck is, okay, like um, I, I, I heard the better angels of our nature and then I heard um, a card from my journey of love deck that is angel of Jupiter awaken that came to mind. And then I thought of how we, you know, it's like we have these angels around us who set examples and don't realize that they do. And I got the impression that there's someone who could embody this energy that is doing that for you and inspiring you to take the next step. And this, uh, I'm, I'm reading from this, I've been reading eclipse energy off of the decks lately. Um, not overly, but this week for sure. So I almost feel like you could have Taurus or Scorpio placements that will be affected by, um, it, the lunar eclipse. Um, that's this, the, the moon going over the sun. So I, I'm hearing like the lunar eclipse may be of significant importance to you re related to either spiritual path or balancing these things and taking the next steps away. Um, and it's like knowing what to do next. Yeah. And that's like putting that's really putting um, things together, like putting things together in a way that makes them tangible and knowing what to do next. <sighs> okay, spirit, these are wonderful messages. Can you clarify the moon here in this like hiddenness from my wonderful creative collective? Just clarify one or two points here so we can get some understanding of how it relates to the energy here, the star. So that's something that is healing. What you couldn't see, you couldn't heal, right? You couldn't see, you couldn't heal it. Yeah, what you don't know, you don't know. I think Oprah said that. And this is giving you the knowing that is allowing you to step into this wonderful healing energy, this empress energy. Spirit, can I get some clarification here uh, regarding this um, wonder and just one final row that will help my creative collective in terms of grounding their energy through this change? Because it is a bit of change. Three of Wands. I think this is a call to stay positive in your expectations, right? That all the ships are coming in. You see them down there? They're all coming in. This isn't someone who's doubting whether whether the good is coming. Yeah, it's someone who knows, right? I mean, I just heard don't get too on too high a horse, but you can you can count on things working out for you in the end. Celebration. You can count on things working out for you in the end. king of pentacles yeah and this again grounded energy after the uh, kind of elusiveness and illusion of the moon so um but i think that there's something to be said here for the fact that what i just got was that the pentacle looks like a moon so in some ways it's almost like your grasp of the things that sort of were elusive to you before are not only the things that are valuable right now, but I think that there's value in what you couldn't see before. So spend some time reflecting on this. Don't rush towards healing. Yeah, because the clarity will come. You don't, it, you don't have to cling to it. Just breathe into it. Breathe into it, that air energy. Let the air open your windows in, in the mental house that you have and let clarity flow through, right? Let a breeze flow through. It's one of my favorite things to do in spring. I heard someone say once that you should uh, think about, you know, cleansing your energy and clearing your energy related to your astrological signs, right? So um, if your fire signs, you may, you know, prefer things like campfires or uh, candles or things like that. And as an air sign, nothing is more beautiful to me than on a cool night in fall or a cool day in spring having that breeze blowing through and I think about the fall evenings because just that air going through and sitting under a big cozy ass duvet and reading <laughs> right so um I it's like there's something that is of value to you and I mean, if you're, so if you're earth signs, this could mean that you get your hands in the dirt, right? And you garden or you ground or you walk across grass that in your bare feet earthing, right? Uh, if you're a water sign, it could be going to a beach. It could be swimming. It could be kayaking or stand up paddle boarding. I've never tried to do sup. I like kayaking and canoeing more, I will admit, but um, yeah. Spirit, can you tell me about this um, heartbreak, Ten of Cups, the Ace of Wands, and this way that we're moving through and expanding 
out of this five of cups place it feels like such a delicious and healing energy yeah page of swords lots of clarity this could also be messages that are coming from people online um, related to this um When I think about that, what I thought of was like, I watch readers and stuff on here when I'm doing things around the house or if I'm writing or working on other projects, less so lately, admittedly, um, but yeah, less so lately because I've been busier um, with doing my own channel, which is still exciting to say. <laughs> um, but when I think about this, I think about how there are times where I log on and it's just like the title of a video where I'm like, oh, that's exactly what I needed to hear. Something like that. It's very small, very small, um, but it is in alignment with this direction. Like this is like a sense of direction and moving towards it to me. It's a passionate direction. Someone could be very clear about how they feel passionate. And it may just be a healing thing for you. It may be a healing thing for you to be like, oh, that is the thing. That is like, yeah, like, oh, that is, oh, happiness is accessible like that. Oh. And like, it's just a little moment of like, oh, but it is transformative at its core. But it's transformative at its core. That's Pluto energy in judgment. Uh, the magician showing up here. So this is, I was waiting for it. <laughs> honestly because the magician's been out every day this week up here in the top uh in the first half of the readings so for the magician to come out down here that tells me that all of these things are coming full circle relative and related to the rest of the week right um yeah i'm and this is where i i almost i feel for sure like the magician and a splendid torch blaze brightly i feel like these things are related like remember that you are the magician like this week has just been all about the magician <laughs> So, Spirit, can I get some clarity on the star? Just very briefly before we end and move into other forms of knowing and wisdom from you. Thank you. Nine of Cups, of course. Why wouldn't you be fulfilled? And the Fool. Okay, like, come on. That's awesome energy to end with. That is amazing energy to end with. The Fool. Yeah. You're, you are leaning into it. <laughs> You are definitely leaning into this shift. But the thing is, though, and remember, whenever we make changes internally, the world around us not only starts to reflect back to us, but things start to move in a way that accommodates the new people that we become in a way when we do this. That's what people mean when they talk about ascension, right? That's what people talk about when they mean spiritual development. Sorry, my, it's all itchy because I've been, it's a little bit on the tight side. You can't see it, but... um. It's like when people talk about spiritual development and, and ascension, it's not this abstract thing. Like this process of going through changes and integrating the wisdom and then moving on after we bring this new awareness of ourselves into our lives, that is ascension. Don't get it twisted. It's not, it's not this like, you know, intense thing where you're just going to disappear and go, right? It's, it's a shift. It's a change. Ascension is really about rising into your highest version and it doesn't even need to mean rising. It can just mean stepping into your highest version. Ascension is rise, a rising word. Um, but that's what this means. Like this to me says that you are able to do this and step into this um, this new perspective, this new way of of looking at change. And it's also working with change, right? It's also working with change. Um, Spirit, can I get some messages? I'm going to use the Miracles Now deck. To clear oh okay i'm gonna use apparently <laughs> i'm going to use the chakra deck first can i get some wisdom here from this deck for my wonderful this chakra deck for my wonderful creative collective please related to this april 14th reading spirit truth it is safe for me to align with and express my higher truth wisdom and knowing i allow others to hold a different perspective to me and know that there is enough space in the universe for all of our truths including my own i am honest with myself and i hear the resonance of truth in my words i express my truth remember we talked about this up here with this like you're not being honest with yourself with this four of cups five of cups five of uh, wands 
right? Not being honest with yourself. So I'll read that one again. I am honest with myself and hear the resonance of truth in my words. If they don't align and if they don't feel like they're resonating, it's time to move into something new that honors you, that honors the truth, right? And the Ace of Swords popped out before as if to remind us of that. You are free to be yourself. Your power is yours to keep. No excuses, no apologies. Banish fear and shine your light. You have always been, you always will be. You are, you belong. You do belong. Sometimes th these situations where we make changes and then we align, the outer world aligns with our inner world, it's like what we can end up doing is getting to this place of feeling like we are like we don't belong, like we're, we're outsiders, you know, we're kind of on the margins again. And that, that can suck. It can suck a lot because it, it hits on these different pain points from when we were little kids where we were, you know, on the margins too, where we were bullied and we may not have been bullied here, but this is just that same, like that isolated energy. So this is probably a call to, to reconnect with spirit and to reconnect with your inner wisdom and your higher self so that you don't feel alone, finding ways to find community in the liminal space that you're in, right? That holding space. And it doesn't have to be like life changing community. It just, maybe it's just going for coffee with a friend you haven't talked to for a while. Not because you're lonely though. Don't use people like that. That's not healthy either. That doesn't honor them and it doesn't honor you. What I'm talking about here is recognizing that while you may have had a couple people that or situations that are shifting and changing out of your life, um, this is this is really about you understanding what community means when you change, understanding what you want community to mean. And I think that that opens up how you can create that for others too, right? So... That is a big thing as well. Can I get some additional messages here, Spirit? Grounding. Yeah, that came up this week too. Grounding. I am anchored in my into my physical existence and resonate in perfect harmony with the physical world. I am of the earth as I am of heaven. I root down and yield to the world around me. I connect with the life-giving energies of the earth and lovingly release lower vibrations to Gaia to be transformed. I am earthed. Beautiful energy. And I'm going to read this to you. So it was on the bottom here. Um, Soar like an eagle to find clarity. Things are not always as they seem. See the beauty and the gift in everything. Pay close attention to messages that are gifted to you in life and through your imagination. Dare to dream and create a vision for your life. You are the creator of your own reality. Yes, you are the creator of your own reality. This splendid torch, right? You are the creator of your own reality. So now I'm going to pull from the Miracles Now deck. <laughs> Spirit, can I please get some messages from a wonderful creative collective here for April 14th? Thank you so much. Whenever I compare myself to others, I simply say this prayer. The light I see in them is a reflection of my inner light. So whenever I compare myself to others, I simply say this prayer. The light I see in them is a reflection of my inner light. That's beautiful. Truly beautiful. And it's this reflection energy. I think it was yesterday or the day before that this reflection energy was coming through, right? So just, it's like we're working a lot with... Um, what used to be like smoke and mirrors, I'm hearing what used to be smoke and mirrors is becoming much clearer to you. And I think that it's really freeing up your inner light and remembering, reminding you of what it means to blaze brightly, right? It's like got major lighthouse vibes on it. And I'm going to pull, of course, from the notes from the universe on love and connection deck by Mike Dooley. Can I get a message for my creative collective for April 13th, please, spirit? You've got time. Yeah, no rushing, no rushing. Ever wonder what would make life's fleeting pain and sorrow totally and unquestionably worth it? How about living forever, wildly in love and loved wildly? You have so much to look forward to. You've got time. Sometimes we tend to be in these places of finding change difficult because we feel that we don't have enough time, right? We don't have enough time on this planet to waste it. And I, it's not about saying you've got enough time to waste. I think it's that 
if you're rushing through these lessons if you're rushing through these les lessons and away from the five of pentacles and away from the five of wands and five of cups instead of listening to what they have to teach you it's like you also can't be a container for the good either and it's not to say that they need each other to exist like the bad and the good but this is to say that you have enough time to make it through you have enough time to take the time to truly heal something to truly work through something right so just remember this Okay, Spirit, what else you got for me for April 14th for my creative collective? What have you got for me here? Do something new. Do something different, right? In service to that wonderment. You've won the lottery. Make room for wonderment. And I think about that when I think about this. Do something new. Do something different. Ever notice how it's easier to fall in love and to be fallen in love with when you're busy? Thank goodness I'm you, the universe right? Life happens when you're making, what is it? It's something about life happens when you're busy making other plans. <laughs> and I feel like that's very true here. Like change happened. And I almost feel like the, the wonderful thing that's happening in this storyline is that something's just on the other side of it, three feet from gold. Like you're just like, it's, I almost feel like there's going to be like a flash of like love or a new project or a new career. There's going to be like new, 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 like the next reading or two will probably be like aces, just aces and more aces. So that is what this reading is here for you for here to tell you today my wonderful creative collective so uh, if this resonated for you please feel free to like and subscribe it helps me to grow the channel and i am very humbled and you know in this capacity to be doing this um and it just helps me to know that this resonated for you uh, and if you're looking for other ways to connect with me throughout the channel throughout the rest of the month there are ways to do that uh, in the different playlists that i've set up so that you can do that through um uh, these daily readings through monthly readings also through energy forecasts and more so if this is where we leave one another 5151 on the time my wonderful creative collective i hope that you have a wonderful morning afternoon or night whenever this finds you and wherever you are on the time space continuum thanks so much for your time have a wonderful day <laughs>